And joining us now to discuss more on this is Roger Severino, Senior Fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center and Director of EPPC's Health and Human Services Accountability Project. Roger, welcome back. Always so great to see you. Uh, first off, I want to get your take on today's oral arguments. It was all about who gets to decide. Will it be individuals deciding what they put into their own bodies? Will it be their bosses? Will it be state governments and health authorities? Or will it be the federal government mandating that people get vaccinated? And that was one of the key questions, who gets to decide? And I think many of the justices were skeptical that the federal government had the power or has the power through a regulation for workplace safety to say that millions upon mi millions of Americans must be vaccinated. And there was a lot of skepticism about that. I think it, it's, it put the Biden administration on its heels. Uh, it was a very interesting argument. The argument wasn't so much whether or not COVID is, is a, a real threat. It's whether or not this is the solution. Is mass forced vaccination from the federal government the solution? Or is it something where the federal government is just trying to make a point to act like it is doing something, anything to address a crisis? And Roger, were there any moments that stood out to you or, or maybe that you found surprising? Well, the Solicitor General, which is the top lawyer for the administration, said that the main purpose was to protect the unvaccinated from getting sick and getting the COVID infection and said some of the folks who cannot get vaccinated because of medical reasons and for religious accommodation, people who object to the vaccine, in many cases because of its link to being tested or developed with aborted fetal cells. And she went so far as to say that the federal government is justified in forcing people to be vaccinated to protect the religious liberty of people who could not get vaccinated. I thought that was extraordinarily surprising coming out of the Biden administration. I'm sure their friends in the ACLU is calling are calling them up right now saying, did you really just say that to the Supreme Court? So I was very pleased to see, surprised me, the Biden administration took a very pro-religious liberty argument in this highly contentious issue. So they're really going to, I think you can't back away from saying that religious accommodation is not only legitimate, it's going to be required in, in many of these cases. Yeah, and as we heard, I'm going to turn to this in Eric's report uh, a little earlier, Senator Ted Cruz actually said that the mandate is unlawful, it's unconstitutional, and also an abuse of power. I want to get your thoughts on that statement. It is hard to imagine that when Congress passed the OSHA Act to give Occupational Safety and Health Administration authority for things like hard hats and things like the heights of railings in, in construction sites, that they meant you could force people to be vaccinated. That's not only a workplace issue, but it's a forever issue. Once you're vaccinated, that's it. You can't ever take that away or take that back. Um, there was a lot of skepticism at, at the court saying whether or not the government has the authority to do such a mandate. Did Congress speak clearly enough? How does it impact the authority of the states in this area? There was a little bit more leeway on the CMS question because it's federal government paying for it. But even there, you saw some hard questioning from some of the justices. Now, you had some of the liberal justices saying, but this is a very dangerous threat right now, especially with the hospitalizations. I was surprised they didn't take into account what has happened with Omicron. The vaccine is a far reduced in effectiveness. It's now down to 33 percent effective in, in limiting transmission of COVID under Omicron. Why are they going to be imposing something when it is it's so limited in its effect to uh, limit the spread of this disease? And Roger, we probably have a, a minute or so left, but quickly talk to us about the importance of this case. What's at stake? And ultimately, what do you think will happen? Well, I think the Supreme Court is probably going to strike down the OSHA mandate. It'll be a closer question on the CMS one uh, because it's a smaller group of healthcare professionals. But the broad mandate is so overreaching. It makes no distinction between young people who are unvaccinated, who are at the same risk level as older people who are vaccinated, but it's only treating the unvaccinated people in a particular way. And masking and testing might not be an option because there's such a shortage of test kits available. So you're going to be in a tough position where people are going to be fired from their jobs, including if the CMS rule goes through in healthcare at the time when there's so much turmoil in the economy and when we see that the efficacy of the vaccine has dropped tremendously. It, it's, it's all shifting in, in uh, various different ways, cutting against the administration. Omicron is looking to be less deadly 
than Delta was, even though it's more transmissible. So we're going to see a lot of questioning from the court. I'm not sure they're going to have enough time by Monday to decide it. Uh, but I think ultimately you're going to say that the federal government has overreached on this question with the federal mandate. All right. And we will see what happens. Roger, thank you so much. Always appreciate your time and analysis. Thank you.